Hello and welcome to this video in which I'll explain the operation of this reminder or to-do list spreadsheet for project managers. This spreadsheet is essentially a rebuild of the lawyer reminder spreadsheet that I uploaded a couple of years ago. I got a bunch of comments back from users saying that they wanted to change the columns because they didn't like the available columns being just file name and reminder description. Those are well suited to lawyers, but I guess a bunch of users wanted to use the spreadsheet outside of the legal context and wanted flexibility in terms of the names that they were able to give to the columns um, up at the top of the table here. So this spreadsheet uh, is much more flexible than the previous one. In fact, the only columns in the spreadsheet which are fixed and whose titles you cannot change are the date column. Uh, that should be fine. Everyone should at a minimum want a date column. Then the day column as well is fixed and then the time status, the time status column being the one that is uh, colored according to how far into the future the reminder is. And uh, most people will probably want that column. So hopefully having that fixed as well will not be a problem. So the active zone of the spreadsheet is columns A through to Z. So you can add additional fields all the way up to column Z and then it's rows five through to 5,000. That's basically the block of data that'll get sorted or manipulated when the macros are used. And similar to the previous spreadsheet, active reminders are kept on the active tab and completed reminders, of which there are none yet, are kept on the completed tab. You'll notice as well that the completed and active tab names have the triple exclamation mark at the end, which similar to these three cells over here, you should not edit or change the text in these cells in any way because the macros use those cells and these tab names as landmarks for navigating when the macros run. So if you disrupt those cells, then you'll likely disrupt the operation of the macros. All right, so I'll go ahead and describe the operation of these different buttons we've got along the top of the spreadsheet. And you'll notice that I've got a bunch of data in the spreadsheet already. There's about uh, 90 reminders and it's a hypothetical uh, bunch of reminders maybe for a project manager who operates uh, construction projects. The spreadsheet that's available for download through the description below is actually empty. So when you get it, you can just add your own reminders. So the first button I'll explain is the new item button. That's the one up here. You basically click this button when you want to create a new reminder, and then you'll be prompted to enter the number of days from now that you want the reminder to come due. So for example, if I put seven and push enter, it'll put it in for seven days from today and it'll color code the time status column accordingly. Then if I'm creating a new reminder, it will often be the case that it's for an existing project. So if I want to duplicate an existing project name, then I can use the duplicate item and column button, which brings up a form which will provide a listing of all the items already in that column. So for example, you can see I've got the delta, the ridge, the main, the maple cliff heights, those are all listed over here. So if I want to go ahead and bring main into the existing column, I just click on main and then click go. So it's basically just an easy way to save yourself a bit of typing. You just click the duplicate item and column button and it'll give you a choice of projects already listed that you can click on to bring into the current column. If your list of projects gets really long, then you can look at this or option over here which basically takes you over to the second set of list boxes and if you type a letter in the top list box it'll do a search and it'll filter down the list to produce only project names that match the letters that you type in so for example if i type in br it's probably going to give me just breeze so and indeed it does if you want to go back you can clear the selections maybe type m it's going to show just the project names beginning with M. I can then click on one and click go. If there's already text in the cell that I had selected before I ran the macro, it'll give me a warning whether I want to overwrite the text. And in this case, I'll just say yes. So that basically demonstrates the duplicate item in column button. And you can do that no matter which column you're in. So for example, even if I went to the task, if I wanted to duplicate uh, the tasks, you can see there's a much longer now because I've got a wider variety of tasks, even though I've only got a couple of projects. And if I put in a bunch of text in the filter or the search box up here, it'll again narrow down the results. And I can cancel if I don't want to go ahead. So that's the duplicate item in cell 
uh, button. If I wanted to duplicate the entire row, I can just click this button here. It'll make a duplicate of the row. And then what I'll often then do is use the modify date button to push forward the reminder to a future date. So what I just did there was I created a duplicate of a reminder and then I set the duplicate for a different date. You might do that, for example, if you want to be reminded of the same thing at two different times, perhaps because you're especially paranoid about missing uh, the deadline for a particular task. You might set an early reminder and a late reminder. So the modify date again that you just click and you push um, type in the number of days from now that you want the new reminder to come to you. If you want to use a date picker, you can push cancel date picker form will come up and you can pick the date you want it to go to. And then you can see that one's a long way in the future. It's more than a year. So that's how the date picker works as well. Um, a complaint that people had or a request people had was they didn't like the time periods that I'd specified. So you can see here we've got due and past due, tomorrow, within a week, one week to one month, one month to one year, and then more than one year. Well, in this version of the spreadsheet, you can actually edit the formula in here yourself. You can see it's an um, if statement, and then the text that appears is in the formula. And you can just edit it yourself if you don't like my descriptions. And as well, you can change the uh, formulas in terms of this one's more than 365, then it's going to display more than a year. So if your reminders typically occur on a timeline much shorter than a year, perhaps everything happens in the next week or two and you want to have one day from now, two days from now, three days from now, something like that, then you can edit the formula um, as you wish. And then the only thing you need to be careful of is to uh, copy and paste the formula down throughout the rest of the column so that at least you've got the same formula applying to all rows of the spreadsheet. And as well, when new reminders are created, the macro basically pulls out the formula from the neighboring uh, row. So be sure to copy any changes you make to the formula down throughout the whole column. So that basically covers off the first four buttons over here. They're all in shades of green because they are typically used to either create or manipulate existing reminders. Then over here, we've got two sort buttons. The way to sort is to click the column you want to sort by. So for example, we can sort by date or we can sort by project. Or if you've got a responsible employee at the particular company you're dealing with, you can sort by the name of the employee. Again, you can name these columns anything you want to suit your context all the way up to column Z. The only columns, once again, you can't edit are these three over here. So the sort and go to is if you want to group together all reminders for a particular item, for example, a particular project, and then you want to jump down to that group. So for example, if I click sort and go to in the project field, it's going to be a similar form than what we saw before in the sense that you've got a full list of all the projects over here and then you've got a narrow down list over here if you search. So if I click uh, Breeze, in fact, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to click one near the end. So I'm going to click See View, for example. So what it did was it sorted all of the data. Again, columns A to Z and up to row 5000. It sorted it into alphabetical order and then jumped me down to the C View project. So it wouldn't really be that difficult in this case to scroll down 90 rows but if you have hundreds of reminders it's nice to be able to jump down to the grouping of reminders for the particular project in this case or if you're going to use it uh, for another category you still want to see all the reminders for a particular contractor you can click the sort and go to button and go down to sparky's electrical and there i am down at the bottom with all the sparky's electrical reminders all right so then the next button is the display hide columns button so this is a form that comes up and you can basically check off the columns that you want to display so perhaps if you've actually got 26 columns all used up um, on occasion you might want to for example not show those ones so we're gonna see the project and the contract column disappear because they are unchecked and you can see they disappear and if you want to bring them back you can come back over here click the check all none button and then click go so that's basically just a quick and easy way to hide and unhide columns then the next item is the move to completed button uh, that's pretty straightforward I'll just uh, sort by date here and then I'll maybe send this one to the completed sheet that's uh, bone drywall and that's the Cliff Heights project. So if I move to completed, it leaves an empty row here. So you can be sure that there was something there and it has actually been moved or something's been moved. And we go to the completed tab and we see there it is. So that's some essentially operation of the spreadsheet. Um, you can add new reminders. And if you decide you want to delete a reminder, you can just use the normal Excel delete rows 
functionality. Um, so that's all pretty straightforward. There's just a couple of um, warnings that I should give. One of the complications that comes with users being able to rename columns whatever they want is that if they've already sent some items to the completed tab, you'll see that the completed tab has got the same headings as the active tab. And indeed, before you begin using the spreadsheet, you should define the column headings you want to use on the active tab, and then you should copy those over and make sure that the column headings are the same on the completed tab. Otherwise, the data that you send to the completed tab won't really make sense. But what happens then, for example, if someone comes along and says, oh, well, I want to add an extra column, or I want to change this, uh, maybe I insert a column over here, so I go like that, and then I say uh, other notes, or whatever it's going to be. Well, the problem then is if I send another reminder to the completed tab when it's finished, it's not going to have the same column headings as the data already on the completed tab. So you'll notice when I click the Move to Completed button, it's going to give me a warning, and it's basically going to say, well, hang on, the headings aren't the same, do you want to proceed? If you click Yes, It'll take the, the reminder, but it's going to rewrite column headings before it puts in the new item. And you can see here, email list has been offset because that um, extra column named other notes has been inserted. So that's kind of clumsy. So a couple of things. First of all, when you're picking your headings for the active tab, think quite carefully about what headings you're going to want, and then copy them over to the completed tab and maybe just stick with them. If you do want to change them, then you might want to save the spreadsheet as a new version clear out the completed tab. If you ever want to go back to those old reminders, you can look at the previous version of the spreadsheet, but at least going forward, all your data is going to be well organized and not confusing. Okay, so I've deleted that second set of headings on the completed tab, and I've also added a bunch of reminders to the completed tab, just so I can show you the operation of some of the functionality on the completed tab. First of all, you can sort by column. So if you want to sort by contractor, if you want to sort by task, you can basically sort the data on the completed tab. As well, the far right end of the completed table, so remember it goes up to Z for the main body of the reminders, but then in column AA, when you send an item to the completed tab, it'll record the time you actually sent it over to the completed tab. That allows you to keep a record of when items were moved to the completed tab. So one thing I suspect people are going to ask for is, well, I want to sort and then subsort because now I've got up to 26 columns of data. I don't just want to sort by contractor. I maybe want to sort by contractor and then responsible employee. So it's quite difficult to predict exactly what people are going to want, but I'll just confirm that you can use the standard custom sort tool within Excel to sort the data. So the best way to do that is to come up to the top left hand heading entry over here and then press Control Shift End. That'll highlight all of the data. And then you can come up to the editing group of the home tab on the ribbon and then click sort and filter and go custom sort and then click my data has headings because remember your top left cell that you selected was actually the row of headings. And when you click my data has uh, headers, you can then pick what well, I want to sort by contractor Then I can add a level and then I want to sort by maybe responsible employee. And you can add more levels as you want. Click OK, and then that's what it's done. So Black Roads, it's got Robin and then Royce. So the other thing people I suspect are going to ask for, because I've already been asked for this historically as well, I want to send my reminder to someone by email. So it is possible to automate sending emails using macros and integrating Excel and Outlook. But the problem with that is not everyone uses Outlook. So depending on your email client and depending on exactly which columns you want to send to the email, that it gets kind of complicated to predict what people are going to want. And most likely any functionality that's coded up won't suit everyone's needs. So I'll just show a little trick which can be used to not automate the sending of emails, but to make it quite a lot quicker. So what you do, it's going to sort by date here. You show the clipboard in Outlook. So you click, if you click on the clipboard, it'll show not just the item that's currently on the clipboard, but it'll show the history of items that are on the clipboard. So you can copy data, put it into the clipboard pane, and then copy different chunks of data that you want to put into different fields of your email. So say, for example, I wanted Delta Bob's the bricklayer to be the subject line of the email. Well, I can select those cells and then Hit Control C for copy, and you'll see it puts up there 
delta bobs the bricklayer. Well, if this is the task, then I maybe want to put that in the body of the email. So I can push copy on that, control C. And then if I want to go a bit further to the right here, and I've got the emails, which I maybe have pre-written into the field, because every time I send out the reminder, I want to have um, the emails is accessible and not have to retype them. So I'll copy that to the clipboard as well. And you'll see now I've got the subject line, the reminder, which I'm going to put in the body of the email and the email addresses themselves. And once I have that data on the clipboard, I can then open an email in Outlook. I can again open the clipboard in Outlook. I can then go to the to field and put in the email addresses. I can go to the subject field and put in the Delta project Bob's the Bricklayer and then I can write a message to Dave and I can basically put in the reminder. And so that doesn't send the email on the click of a button, but it does allow pretty convenient movement of information out of the reminder spreadsheet and into an Outlook email. Okay, that brings us to the end of this overview video. If you find this video and the spreadsheet useful, please give the video a thumbs up and let me know your thoughts about the spreadsheet in the comments section below. Thanks.